Hey everybody, welcome to monstertutorials.com. I am Ed Talbert, your host and blogger and tutorial maker. Welcome to Monster Tutorials. Today we're going to make a jar full of eyes. It doesn't have to be full of eyes. You can put anything you want in it, but I'll show you the techniques to make the old labels, to make the jar look old, to make this cool lid that looks like it's 100 years old, to make a seal and uh, have a separate tutorial on how to make these really cool eyes. I'll also go into detail on how to make the blood that I made. All using just easy stuff like glue and coffee and coffee grounds and printer paper. Really easy. Stick around. For today's project, we'll need the following things. For a jar of eyes, we need a jar. This is just a plain old olive jar. We need something to put in it. So we're going to use eyes. These eyes, I have a tutorial at monsters, monstertutorials.com slash eyes that shows you exactly how to make these guys. We're gonna put these in the jar as our medical sample. Some glue, different kinds. I have clear glue, which I'm gonna to use to make some blood with. I have some Mod Podge to cover uh, the jar inside and out to make it look a little bit older. Uh, we're going to need some labels, so I made these uh, in Excel, actually, they can be done in Word or any other uh, you know, text editing software. Uh, if you really like these and don't know how to make them or find some on the internet, just shoot me an email, I'll send you this template. Uh, they're very easy to make, I can send them to you. Uh, got some food coloring, uh, we're going to use that for the blood and uh, some coffee. I have decaf coffee because I bought this thinking I would drink it at night and be able to have coffee at night without you know staying awake all night but I didn't realize when they take the caffeine away they also take all the flavor, uh, all the smell, all the everything and it's just brown hot water. So I have a ton of these that my wife bought me. We're going to use these to uh, make the labels antique to make the jar antique. And finally, to rest the eyes or your medical sample, I'm going to use a piece of gauze. This piece of gauze is going to sit inside of the jar with a little bit of blood. It's going to be antiqued with the coffee so it looks nice, dirty, grungy, like it's been sitting in the, on the shelf of a lab, mad scientist lab for many years, or mental institution, or a research hospital, or even a, a anthropology department at some obscure university. That's what I did the labels on uh, Brookside University. Okay, so let's get started. Let's head downstairs to the coffee maker. Uh, we're going to make some strong coffee, uh, unsweetened, so we can start aging the, the gauze. Okay, the we're labels. down here in the kitchen. Uh, I got a shallow pan. Coffee's brewing right there. And uh, while it finishes brewing, I'm going to cut the labels. Where are they? Right here. Okay, to cut as many labels as I need, I'm going to go ahead and dip them all. Cut them all out and dip them all so I have uh, extra labels. I'll put them away in a Ziploc bag and if I make any more jars with eyes or fingers or hands or whatever, uh, I can use those labels. So you can do a lot of labels in just one pass. These labels right here are going to go on the side of the jar and these guys I'm going to use as a security seal. Uh, just choose whatever font you like. I like this one because it looks like it's from a typewriter. Okay, amigos, got the coffee. It's ready, still steaming. We're gonna pour it into the shallow pan and uh, we're gonna just throw the labels in. Also, make sure to save your coffee grounds because that will help with some of the aging of the labels as well as make the blood that we're going to make later a little more gory with little lumps and clumps and you know coagulated bits and pieces so here we go all we're going to do in this step is we're going to take the labels that we already cut out and just drop them in the coffee leave them there for about five minutes depends on what kind of paper you have how much it soaks in but with this paper this regular printer paper uh, five minutes maybe ten 
will be uh, enough. Uh, just going to drop them there. A couple minutes into it, I'll flip them over, make sure that we have even coverage. Oh, well, that uh, soaks in. I'm going to take a little bit more of coffee and mix it with Mod, Mod Podge. Uh, one part Mod Podge, one part coffee. And if that's still too light, we can add a little bit of food coloring. But I think that's going to be enough. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that and I'll show you how I use it to make this a little bit older. Oh, while you're at it, go ahead and throw your gauze in the coffee so it starts getting it that nasty old, so you can see, color. We're going to dry that later. Okay, I'm using a shot glass here, a Halloween shot glass, of course, and uh, one of my wife's favorite spoons. She doesn't know she's not here. I'm going to take one part of coffee out of the coffee we poured and uh, one part Mod Podge. Mix it together. That little bit will go a long way because what we're doing is brushing the inside of the jar. And loosely, not too exact, one part Mod Podge. Okay, now. I'll be right back. i got to wash this. So I don't become a dead man when my wife gets back. I'm going to take one of these, just stir and just stir the combination until it's uh, nice. So you can see it's like a milky brown uh, mix of glue and coffee. I'm going to... Uh, looks about right. This is just going to give, it, give the jar just a very light tint. So we're going to take a brush and brush the whole inside of the jar. So we're going to put this here to dry and drain. Uh, we're going to go get the labels or flip them, these labels right here, out of the coffee mix and set them to dry. Okay, these have been soaking for about 10 minutes. I'm just going to set them on this paper towel to dry. See, it's all nice and yellow, old. And that's just with coffee. You can do the same with tea and there's a variety of other things you can use to stain it. I think coffee is something that a lot of people have at home. Uh, it's safe. It's not poisonous. doesn't have any chemicals. Okay, see if I can fit in this frame. We have the labels drying. I flipped them over. They're almost dry. They're not quite there yet, but they took a nice yellow tint. As you can see, they're so kind of soft, moist. So we're gonna let those dry. Then we have the jar is drying and now it's time to make some blood. So we're going to take a teaspoon of clear glue. Okay, just one. Then we're going to take some food coloring and we're going to do five drops of red for one drop of blue. Uh, we'll make that in a shot glass and I'll show you how in one sec. Okay, we have the ingredients ready and the other thing I got was the leftover coffee grounds from our labels from the coffee we just brewed and we're going to use some of those to make that blood a little more lumpy and uh, disgusting, a little more realistic. We're going to save some of the coffee grounds also for to sprinkle over the, the labels to give it some blotchiness and some uneven aging. Uh, on the labels, we're also going to fold the corners and crease them. We're going to use an emery board. And I have a whole tutorial on how to do old paper, old labels, and old uh, uh, book pages. Uh, so I'm not going to go into huge detail, but uh, I'll tell you that I'm going to sprinkle some of this coffee over the labels and maybe splash a little bit of uh, coffee, and maybe a drop or two of blood, uh, of blood on the labels. Uh, so it looks like somebody maybe was doing an experiment had bloody hands or bloody gloves and touched the jar. So, like I said, there's going to be a special tutorial just on making labels. So for now, we're just going to put the coffee on it and sprinkle it. Now we're going to make some blood. So we're going to take the Elmer's glue, and like I said, one teaspoon. This one will uh, dry clear, which is a cooler look 
although not as realistic because we know that blood is not see-through, it's not clear. Make sure I get a little bit more there. Okay, let's see. Some glue, all the glue in here. Get this clean because this is again not mine, it's my wife's. Maybe I should buy my own kitchen stuff. Um, a little bit of coffee grounds, not a lot, just enough to give it some volume and grittiness. And then we're going to get some food color. I bought the cheapest one I could find. I believe this was like a dollar fifty or so for a pack of four. There you go. It's a beauty. So five drops of red. Don't get it on yourself. Okay. And a drop, a big drop of blue. And all we're going to do is mix this stuff up. Let's see if I, the camera can see the color. Maybe you can't, but it's going to give a nasty. Uh, so I'll give you a little example right here of what it's going to look. It's very congealed, very thick, very nasty. So we have our blood ready. We're going to set it aside. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you guys is uh, I have a tutorial on how to make these eyes. And if you notice, I messed up right here on this edge and it's white. So, uh, like Bob Ross would say, there's only happy accidents. I'm going to take a drop of this blood and just cover that little spot right there. Make it look like a part of the experiment. So that eye is fixed. It looks really nasty with that blood. I'm going to set it to dry. Uh, and I'll be right back when everything's dry. The next step we're going to do is we're going to take this lid and uh, this is quite easy. Take some tissue paper, crumple it a hundred times if you need to, and then straighten it up. So it has a nice texture, almost like a skin texture. We're going to coat the top of this with glue and the sides, and we're going to glue the tissue over it to make it look like an old, uh, either like a leather lid or an old, uh, piece of wood or just something older than a private selection fancy lid okay so I'm going to be doing that in the next take and we're still waiting for all this stuff to dry uh, once we get done with this lid and everything's dry we're gonna put it all together and end up with a nice uh, jar full of ice well not full just with two eyes all right see you in a minute okay now for the lid as I said we're going to take the tissue paper which I have crumpled Quite a few times. I'm just going to take a little bit of glue, any kind, doesn't matter. I like this stuff. And what's the closest one to me right now? All right, that is awesome. Anyway, and all we're going to do is just cover the lid, all of it, with glue. I'm going to cut this tissue into a more manageable piece that covers the, the lid. As I said, we're going to crumple it and uncrumple it and so on until it gets some creases to look like old leather or just like something old. Just going to place it on top of the lid and get the edges in. start folding them in. You can leave it like that but for a additional layer of protection what I do is just get some more of this glue and just go on top. The gauze is now dry. It's nice and yellow as you can see it looks old. I put some uh, coffee grounds on it and then shook it off, shook them out and uh, looks nice and old. Uh, smells like coffee. 
or jar is now ready and it has a it's very hard to tell from the camera but it has a little tint and glaze that makes it look a little bit older looks a little bit yellowish so now we're going to assemble the first part while the lid dries and we're going to take the gauze and fold it a few times this is going to be where your eyes are going to rest so something like that nice you can uh, make it a little more raggedy here on the edges make it look old and just get a nice dirty look and the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of the blood and put it on the bottom this is going to hold it in place so that we can uh, that on the bottom is glue by the way so it's going to dry clear just put a few drops of it almost as it has you know, seeped through the gauze this will hold the gauze in place once we set it in uh, you'll be able to move this prop around without the eyes and the gauze flopping all over the place so yeah pick a spot that you like that looks good I'm going to place the eyes in here So when we get our eyes and we're going to put a few drops of blood on the gauze and on the bottom of the eye. Just let your imagination go wild. You can be as gory as you want and fill it up with blood or just a few drops carefully placed. Uh, I'm going to put some on the bottom of the eye. Put a little bit of blood there. A little bit of blood here on the nerve, the optic nerve to make it look even nastier. Maybe a few drops here on the edge as if the eyes had been ripped out of a head. Okay, so put a little ring of blood around it. And I'm going to just place it in the jar. Move it a little bit forward so you can actually see the eye. Now we're going to do the other eye. Where's my other eye? Here's my other eye, and we're going to do the same. So you guys, you already covered it with a little bit of blood. Just gonna place it right next to its friend. Center them a little bit. We'll play with this until you get it right. See those eyes are starting to look quite ominous. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of bl more blood on top of it, a little bit on the bottom of the of the jar, um, and uh, like I said, our lid is still drying, and our labels. You see if I can pan here. The labels over here are uh, almost done. That that you see on top is coffee grounds. So we're going to take that, show, shake those off. Take one label, put it here on the bottom, put one on the top. So I'll be right back. Okay, in this step we're going to take the lid, it's already, the tissue has glued, uh, was glued and it's dry now. So we're going to just cut the excess off. But for now I'm going to start with a coat of just uh, plain old house latex. This will give me a nice rubbery thick coat that will cover all this look and it will take the, this texture uh, really well. And after that, we're going to do our famous dry brushing technique, which I explained in the corpsing video. So let's get started with this. Right, so this coat is ready. I'm going to set it to dry, and then we'll start with that dry brush. We have coated the, the lid, the jar, with uh, black latex, and it's now mostly dry. There's still a little bit of uh, paint on it. Uh, and now we're going to start that dry brushing technique. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the darkest color which is this, uh, what is it, burnt umber? Yeah, burnt umber. And we're going to apply it and uh, the way this works is uh, the first coat is not as dry. It's going to be a generous, it's still called dry brushing, but we're going to start with a lot of brown. And then as the coats get lighter then it becomes a drier brush. Then it really really you barely get any paint on it and all you do is uh, touch the high points as you get lighter and and get the the dimension and depth of the paint let's get started with that well, i'll start with uh burnt umber for the first coat Now 
All I'm going to do is take the excess off and start just all over. It's taking the shine off of the lid, as you can tell, and it's depositing some brown in uh, not only the high parts, but the low parts as well. All right, so this lid's starting to look much more brown. Uh, looks like an old piece of something, not like a jar of uh, olives, like the lid of a jar of olives. Uh, I'm going to start lightening up the color with a little bit of uh, ochre, yellow ochre and green. I'm going to mix both and do a very light uh, dry brush. Then if I need to at the end, if I still want more dimension, I'm going to add some white. I'm going to add a little bit more uh, yellow ochre just to tone down the green because that green is pretty bright it almost looks like an incredible Hulk green I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera but uh, there's a little bit of green a little bit of bright green on it so I'm going to use this yellow ochre and uh, kind of just tone it down a bit with a touch here and there okay that is our lid with the dry brushing you know, I'll try to turn it and put it against the light so you can see uh, doesn't look like a, you know, olive jar anymore. Okay, so we've assembled the jar. We are going to apply the label now, and all it is is uh, glue. And um, like I said, I'm going to put it right here. Uh, this particular glue dries uh, clear. So uh, I'm just going to paint it. It gives it a glaze anyway, so it looks pretty cool on the jar if you go over where that label is supposed to go. And yeah, there's not much science to this except just glue it there as high or as low as you want it. I want it a little bit on the side here and I kind of like the look I don't know how authentic it is of uh, being uh, covered with a little bit of glue on top and it gives it uh, more durability uh, when people handle it or you know somebody bumps into it it doesn't just fall apart so I like to get that and push it up a little there you go a few wrinkles look cool okay so this label is done. I'm going to let that dry and now let's put the safety seal. Yeah, let me get this glue off of my wife's table. Because I don't think that would go too well. Oh, looks like new. Oh, got some more over here. Great. All right. Looks like we're good now. Uh, oh, this guy. Which way do we want it? I want it straight through here. So take this, let's put a nice line of glue all the way across, all the way there. Take our security seal, just cover it over. Now let's get the sides here. to fold this one all the way under so there put a little bit of glue on top that helps it stick a little bit better see that it's folded under and then finally just run your finger over the top and let's get to this side there you go let's let this dry and I'll show you the final product when we're done and that is it here is your jar with the eyes in it as you can see it turned out pretty cool has the labels with the aging has the eyeballs inside with the fake blood that we learned how to make it has the seal I made it broken because if it's a biological hazard it looks cool if it's broken somebody opened it and here is the back as you can see there's blood 
and the seal on this side. Well, I almost dropped it. So, there's our jar full of ice. So, if you like this prop, I have a ton more that I do. I teach you how to make weird stuff like this. Uh, so go to my website, monstertutorials.com, sign up for the email. So when I come up with a new tutorial, like uh, eyes or hands or how to make a spell book or how to corpse a skeleton, you'll be the first one to know when you get that email that says, hey, check out my new tutorial, okay? The other thing you can do is I'm gonna give you like three seconds and, uh, and you can subscribe. So I'm gonna count to three and you subscribe wherever it is, okay? Cool, thank you for subscribing. And uh, until next time, I'm Ed Talbert with monstertutorials.com and take one last look. Here's your jar full of ice. Pretty cool.